Acts chapter 25. Um, last week we, we started looking at Paul's trip to Rome. And uh, this week we're going we're gonna to continue with that. We're looking at our hope. Uh, believing God in your situation. If Paul was going through something, uh, hopefully we'll never go through physically. But uh, everybody's going through things. And uh, life is not always, life doesn't always turn out the way you thought it was going to. But uh, the Lord goes with us and the Lord knows. Uh, we, we saw in uh, Acts chapter 20 and verse, through uh, verses 25, or, I'm sorry, through chapter 25, uh, the situation that led up to Paul's boat trip that we're going to look at today, uh, he was keen to get to Jerusalem uh, for Pentecost. Uh, he got there, re he reported to the church, uh, told them what he'd been doing, how God had been blessing the, the ministry. And then they encouraged him to participate in a Jewish ceremony in the temple. Now, whether he was right or wrong to do it, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, he did it, and uh, as a result, he was beaten and he was arrested. And as he was being led away, he asked if he could speak to the crowd. <laughs> and he gave his testimony, gave a, a gospel message. He appeared before the Jewish council, gave his testimony to them, appeared before the Roman governor. And all the while, the, the Jews were plotting to kill him. They, were, they wanted him to be brought before the council a second time. They had men prepared to kill him while he was being transported. Uh, as he was before the, uh, uh, the Roman governor, he asked to be sent to Rome. Evidently, this was every Roman citizen's right. They could appeal to Rome. And in uh, Acts chapter 25, verse 10, uh, then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. At the end of uh, verse 11, he says, I appeal unto Caesar. Festus said, you've appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you'll go. And uh, so the, uh, the situation is set where we're coming to uh, Acts chapter 27 where Paul will be sent to Rome and, uh, and be tried. In the meanwhile, before he's sent, Herod, uh, the, the Jewish king, King Agrippa, asks to talk to, to Paul. And he and his wife come and, and talk to Paul. And Paul, again, gives his testimony. And uh, uh, the king says, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You know, there's a lot of people like that. They think, well, maybe, al almost. And uh, Paul said, I wish that, that you were both almost and altogether such as I am, he said, except for these bonds, <laughs> except for being a prisoner. And uh, so uh, the, the stage is set for Paul to be sent to Rome. And in, uh, the thing I noticed was every situation he came across, he shared his testimony. He just take the opportunity. Uh, here's a crowd I'll never get to talk to again. Uh, let, let me tell you what the Lord has, has done for me. Uh, Agrippa's comment in Acts chapter 26, uh, verse 31, uh, this is Festus and Agrippa, when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves saying, this man doth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he'd not appealed unto Caesar. So they're saying, well, this guy hasn't done anything wrong. If, if he hadn't asked to go to Rome, we, we could probably set him free. But you know, there's something else at work here. Sometimes things happen because God is doing something. Right. In Acts chapter 23, verse 11, uh, the Lord had appeared to Paul and uh, stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. As thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. God had a plan for, for Paul. Uh, you know, sometimes the things we're going through, God has is, is got a purpose for it. Well, not sometimes, all the time. And uh, we, we need to, uh, to understand that. And we don't need to lose hope. We need to understand that. Uh, you know, it used to be when I was a kid, uh, oftentimes preachers would say, who'd rather be here than in the best prison in town? You know? <laughs> oh, amen, amen, you know, everybody would say. But, you know, if God's will is for you to be in the prison in town, that's the place you need to be. Right. You know, that's uh, talking about this uh, film that's coming up, Tortured for Christ. That man said when he was released from prison, he felt like he was losing his ministry. <laughs> God had given him a, a ministry uh, in the prisons. In, uh, I think it was Bulgaria that was the actual country that, that he was in. You, you know, God moves in, in some pretty strange ways. And if we're not ready for what God is doing, uh, we can resent it rather than using it for, for his glory. In Acts chapter 27, uh, let's start with verses 1 and 2. 
Uh, my title for the message this morning is My Trip to Rome by Paul. <laughs> uh, verse 1, when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship of Adramitrium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonia, Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. So here's Paul's situation. He's a prisoner. Now, I, I don't know if you understand, but prisoners generally don't get to do what they want. Uh, they, they're prisoners. And that was, that was his situation. He was a prisoner for the Lord. Now, you might notice when we read through the, these chapters, quite often the word we is used, uh, that we should sail into Italy. Luke is writing this. Luke wasn't a prisoner. He chose to go with Paul. Uh, there's another man mentioned who seems to be with them as well, Aristarchus, a uh, Macedonian of Thessalonica. Uh, he wasn't a prisoner. He just went with them to, to support Paul and, and to help him on the way. Uh, listen, if I go to prison, will you go with me? <laughs> you know, I'll, uh, hopefully it wouldn't come to that. I don't think they'd let us do that here. But uh, here they are transporting him to Rome. And here's these men just going with him. Paul had to go. Uh, they chose to go. And you know, it was a dangerous and difficult situation. Um, we flew recently, and you know, it was the first time I'd ever really noticed how flimsy those wings are on those airplanes. We were taking off, and man, that thing was, it was flopping around. And I thought, Lord, I hope that wing stays on there. <laughs> and you know, very rarely do you have a problem in an airplane, but listen, that was not the kind of transport they had. Uh, it was dangerous. They often lost ships. We've got ships all around Australia and all around the world that, you know, somebody set off and, and didn't make it. And uh, that was Paul's situation. I'll tell you ahead of time, this ship doesn't make it. <laughs> uh, verse 7, when we had sailed slowly many days and scarce were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni. They couldn't even go where they wanted. And hardly passing it, came unto a place which is called the Fair Havens. Nigh whereunto was the city of Lycia. Now when much time was spent, and uh, when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already, already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, I'll read that in just a moment, but you can see it's a dangerous, slow, difficult situation, just being in, in the boat. And Paul admonishes them. Paul tells them something Listen, in verse 10. He said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. So here's Paul's warning. Do they listen? Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Uh, you know, we face this all the time. Here's Paul. Now, I can understand why they wouldn't listen to him. He's, he's not a sailor. He's not the captain. Uh, but Paul knew some things they didn't know. <laughs> and uh, he told them, here's what's going to happen. If you're a Christian... You probably have a lot of times when you wish people would listen to you. you. You tell them about eternity. You tell them even just about life. You know, the Bible's full of how to live. And, uh, you know, as Christians, oftentimes you'll see things people are doing. You think, ooh, that's, that's going to lead to no good. And uh, oftentimes people won't listen. Paul had the same thing. In verse 12, it seemed okay. Because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart hence. Most of the people said, we need to keep going. You know, that, that's the way a lot of people work, isn't it? Uh, majority rules. Uh, sometimes we call it democracy. Democracy doesn't always work, folks. Uh, sometimes the, the majority of people can be wrong. Uh, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete and lieth toward the southwest and northwest, and when the south wind blew softly, Supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. Boy, it looked good. Nice, soft wind blowing. This will be good. We'll, uh, this will work out, you know. You ever done that? You, you, you sit off on something, you think, this will be okay. Uh, you know, I, I know that the, uh, the water pump's about to go out, but we can go across the outback. <laughs> we'll be all right. <laughs> um, there's, been, there's a lot of things in life where people think, this won't hurt me. This is looking good. Uh, we were talking in, uh, in Sunday school about drugs and alcohol, things like that. 
You know, most people don't start into drugs and alcohol thinking, oh, I'll ruin my life and my family and, uh, you know, probably die. No, they think, oh, this, this is okay. This will be all right. And uh, that's, that's the way their, their situation was. It seemed okay. And, you know, sin often seems okay at first. But disaster strikes. Verse 14, not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocliden. You know how in the news they'll, they'll name the, the storms? This was that kind of storm. It was, it was big enough, it had a name, you know. It's like some potholes on the roads, you know. We, they're, they're on the map, you know. Uh, called Eurocliden. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. They lost control. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they'd taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksand, strike sail, and so were driven. I was reading about this, how that these single-masted ships, if they got into to heavy winds, that one mast could just rip right out. That's why they had to undergird, and boy, they had to do a lot of things, to, because if, that, if the mast tore out, they, they'd had it. And that's what, what they were afraid of. Verse 18, we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. The third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And we, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They were in a, a situation where they, they'd given up. They weren't able to control the ship. Uh, they, they were worried that it would, would fall apart. And, uh, you know, as, as, as I read this, I thought, you know, there's a lot of people whose lives are like that. You know, they, they've set out. They think, oh, this will be okay. Everybody says we should do it. Uh, you know, it's, it's looking good. But then disaster strikes. Now, not everybody. You know, not everybody has, has this kind of thing happen. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who have lost hope. And that's what their situation was. They lost hope. Sometimes... It's a result of our own choices. And that's almost, I think that's probably harder than, than any other. We've made choices and, and man, those choices have come to, to naught and left us in, in ruin. Sometimes it's not our choices. Sometimes it's just circumstances, things that we, uh, we couldn't affect. Uh, you know, there's a lot of areas, you know, our work, uh, our children. Uh, you know, one of the hardest things is when uh, we have a difficulty that involves our children, uh, our marriage, our health, uh, a death in the family. You know, there's just so many things. But you know, we need to understand our hope is not in our circumstances. There's a lot of people who think that by changing their circumstances, everything will be all right. But that's a mirage. Uh, that, that's just a facade. Our hope is not in our circumstances. Uh, because, you know, Jesus talked about the rich man and Lazarus. Do you remember them? The rich man had the best circumstances. He died and went to hell. Lazarus had terrible circumstances. He was poor. He was sick. He was abandoned. He died and went to heaven. Listen, circumstances are not all there is. Now, I'll be honest with you. I'd rather have good circumstances than bad circumstances. <laughs> but if God's purpose for my life involves bad circumstances, that's my hope. My hope is in the Lord. Amen. He can take, take me through wherever I am. Uh, trouble comes to everyone, by the way. Now, you can look at some people's life. I had somebody say the other day to me, well, you've got it easy. Wish I had your circumstances. <laughs> uh, okay, you can have them. <laughs> uh, you know, you just don't know what other people are going through. Right. Physically, spiritually, mentally, socially. Yeah, you know, most people don't wear their life on their sleeve. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm probably more aware of what people are going through in our church than most. And I think, man, you know, these are people of faith. These are people who are trusting the Lord in spite of their circumstances. And that's, it's just got to be that way. Right through Scripture, you'll see examples of this. One that came to my mind was Sarah. You remember Sarah? God told her she was going to have a child, and she was barren. Man, that would be hard to bear, you know, for years and years and years. Now, God did bless her, and, you know, she, she was a, a person of faith. Joseph, sold by his brothers, a slave, a prisoner, Man, uh, those were some, some hard years in his life, but God had a purpose. Moses, remember Moses, as, you know, he began to look around, he said, well, I, I'm not really uh, of this. You know, he was a part of the, of the elite of, of e Egypt, the, the most powerful nation of his day. 
and he had to choose. And when he chose, he, you know, he did some wrong things and he had to flee for his life. What a difficult time he had. Yet God was in it. Daniel, taken as a young man to another country as a, as a captive. I was thinking of Jeremiah. You know, God called Jeremiah to preach before he was born. He said, from the womb. And uh, God told him to preach. And when he preached, uh, it's there in Jeremiah 19 and, and 20. I won't read it today. But uh, the, the high priest had him hit, slapped him, hit him, and put him in stocks. Now, I assume stocks are those kind of things your head and your hands stick out. I, I could be wrong on that. And, and boy, it, it upset Jeremiah. <laughs> he didn't like that. He said, I'm not going to preach anymore. But then he said, the message was in my heart like a burning fire. And he couldn't contain it. And his statement is, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. Listen, we're all going to go through tough times. Uh, Paul, uh, you know, it, it sounds nice. I'm going to go on a cruise. And let me say, that's, that's the last thing I want to do. <laughs> uh, me and water don't get along real well. Some of you went with me one time on, 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 a, on a little cruise. Um, it, but, you know, there's, there's things in life we think, oh, that'd be fun. Trip to Rome. <laughs> But it just happens that he's going as a prisoner. He's going at a time when, uh, when the ship is going to sink. And he knows it ahead of time. You know, there's, there's a lot of things in life that are difficult. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, the tendency is to blame God. And, and even sometimes as Christians, we think, you know, well, Lord, I've been faithful. Why, why, is, why are good things not happening to me? And yet we don't know the next step and the next step and the next step. Uh, we say we trust the Lord. We need to trust him during the hard times. Trouble will come to everyone. Uh, James said, uh, our life is like a vapor that passeth away. You know, it, it's not about this life. It's about eternity. And we need to be trusting the Lord. In uh, Acts chapter 27, uh, there in and, uh, verse 20, it says that to those people, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. The next word then is but. Aren't you glad that, you know, sometimes we're, we don't really see everything. Hope wasn't gone. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. <laughs> Here's Paul. Now, isn't that interesting? God tells him, Paul, I'm going to save all these other people because I need to get you to Rome. Did you know that you're salt and light in, in your world? There's blessings that others are getting because you're serving the Lord? Uh, what a blessing. Uh, here's... here's God's message through Paul to those people. Um, but, you know, it was, they were in trouble, but here's Paul's message. Now, let me just say this before I move on uh, about angel messengers. Uh, be, be real careful there. Um, Paul was an apostle. Uh, the Bible wasn't complete. Uh, but be, caref be careful. God's angels, when they give a message, will, will tell you to worship God and to believe the Bible. They won't contradict that in any, any way. Uh, the Bible says that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So you've got to be careful. Uh, in Galatians, Paul wrote to them uh, that if he or an angel from heaven were to give them a different message, don't believe them. Uh, this, this is the, the standard. And the angels know that and God knows that. Uh, anyway, uh, Paul's general message was, number one, you should have listened to me. <laughs> Don't you love it when you get to say that to somebody? Now, try to resist, you know. But uh, Paul is saying that for, for a purpose. In verse 21, he said, you should have listened. And then he says, you should listen now. You should have listened before, but you should listen now. In, in verse 25, be of good cheer. Believe God. Now, that's a message for all of us. See, sometimes, well, we're all going to have failed in the past. Don't live there. Don't live there. Don't make that who you are. You know, you should have listened, but listen now. 
Yeah, I, I meet people, I, I know people who their whole life is wrapped around some mistake that they, either they or someone else made in their past. Don't be like that. Now, you should have listened. I mean, we're all, we all have things like that, don't we? Where we should have done this or we should have done that. But listen, that, we can't go back. We can't change it. Don't continue in past failure. Do listen now. <laughs> Paul has a, he has a new message for him. You know, he told him before. We're going to be all right. You know, we probably shouldn't go on this trip. We should hang on. But they went anyway. He says, you didn't listen now, but here's what God has, has said is going to happen. We're going to lose the ship, but no lives will, will be lost. Now, there's some really specific things here. There's actually quite a lot here. We're going to cover it pretty quickly. So uh, if you're taking notes, that, that'll, that'll help you. But in specific, uh, we want to look at some things here, uh, handling disappointments and having hope. We need that. You're going to have disappointments. You need hope. Uh, number one, there's no going back. <laughs> now, there's things that we should do about our past. If we've wronged someone, uh, we should, uh, you know, apologize. We should make it right if, if we're able to. But basically in life, there's no going back. Uh, you know, we can't change where we were born. We can't change uh, the past, the decisions we've made in the past. Uh, learn from it, uh, but don't live there. Uh, we should have listened, but... Now is the time to obey the Lord. Secondly, he says, be of good cheer. You know, that's just a general attitude toward life that God wants us to have. I exhort you, be of good cheer. That's what Jesus said when he came up to the men, you know, as he was walking on the water. They, they were frightened out of their lives, thinking it was a ghost. Be of good cheer, he says. It is high, be not afraid. And pretty much the same advice Paul gives here. Uh, be of good cheer. Uh, there is hope. And the Bible calls God the God of hope. You realize that? Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. What a blessing. Our God is the God of hope. We can be people of good cheer. We don't have to be unhappy, at least all the time. I mean, there'll, there'll be times and you'll be unhappy. Uh, be of good cheer. In verse 23, he gives us some, some great truths. He said, there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. One of the things that you, you can get from that is God is with us. Now, this was, this was an, an angel, but as, as Christians, uh, we have the Holy Spirit. You know, God is with us. He said he'll never leave us or forsake us. You know, if, if you're looking for security, that's it. God's, God's with you if you're saved. Uh, you have his promise. Paul was able to say, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Listen, if God wants me to live here, this way, that way, that's great. But if he takes me to heaven, that's even better. God is with me. Then he says, whose I am. Do you realize that the main significance you have in life is who you belong to? Now, there's people who, to them, I am Doyla's husband. <laughs> We, we were just in, in the States recently and seeing family. There's others to whom she is Bill's wife. You know, we, we, we have significance because of that. Well, even greater is the fact that whether you belong to God or not, that's what gives you significance. It's not your job. It's not your looks. Uh, it, it's not your, you know, fill in the blank there. It's do you belong to the Lord? That's what gives you significance. And then he says, whom I serve. That's your purpose. Those are the three main things in life people are looking for. Security, significance, and purpose. They're all found in Jesus Christ. Listen, don't forget that. Don't forget that. As you're going to school, as you're going to work, as you're struggling with this or that, your significance is, I'm a child of the King. Your security is, God is with me. And God has a purpose. Whatever you're going through, look for God's glory. Then in verse 24, Again, he says, fear not. Fear not. Uh, first, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7 is a great scripture. He says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen, don't just believe the negative of that. It, it's true. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. God has given us the spirit of power and of love. And I love that last one, a sound mind. <laughs> we can go to God's word and we can find out what's true and what's right and what's good. 
Uh, aren't you glad? We don't have to live in fear. Now, there's a certain natural fear. You need to, you know, don't walk off tall buildings or step in front of cars or, you know, things like that. You use the brain God gave you. But you don't have to be a fearful person. And then he says, not only be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Now, Paul is really the one who's believing the Lord here. Uh, I think he's encouraging them to believe the Lord as well. Uh, and as we read it, we can take the message from that, believe the Lord. Uh, I mean, really, uh, that's, that's the beginning and the end. In Psalm 39, he says, now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. <laughs> Listen, what are you waiting to happen that's going to make life different? <laughs> Your hope's in the Lord. That's there already. <laughs> He's already trustworthy. Uh, claim the promises of God. One of the most amazing things is how ignorant oftentimes we are as Christians is what God has said. God has made some tremendous promises. We need to just believe them and operate in light of them. Uh, we need to live in obedience to God's word. Uh, God says he'll bless us and leave the results up to God. See, that's, that's where we make our mistake is we, we decide what should happen. Then we tell God how he should do it. Uh, we need to go to the Lord and ask him. Uh, there's no going back. We might as well be of good cheer and, and, and trust the Lord and, and not be afraid and, and just believe him and operate in, in light of his word. Now, what an amazing thing. Paul was believing God, not his situation. And, and of course, he was immediately in Rome and, and had gold. And, no. <laughs> the, the trip went on. You know, just because you're trusting the Lord doesn't mean this is not a fairy tale. Yeah, and they all lived happily ever after. What we do in heaven. But look at verse 26. Uh-oh, here's a word. How be it? We must be cast upon a certain island. He's saying, we're going to crash. <laughs> if you read the rest of the story, they, they very carefully pick where they crash. But they crash and the whole boat is destroyed and they jump in the water. And Anyway, it's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, verse 27. When the 14th night was come. As we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country. Fourteen days they've been in this storm. Man, uh, they'd not only been seasick, they'd have, they'd have just been sick, you know. It was, it was a terrible time, driven up and down. And then uh, they crash. In, uh, in verse uh, 44, when they were crashing, the, some of the soldiers wanted to kill all the prisoners. And uh, the centurion said, no, let them, let them try and escape. And uh, verse 44, the rest, some on board, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Just like God had told Paul, they all got safe to land and, and the, boat was, the boat was destroyed. They, uh, they light a fire. The people of the island welcome them. And as Paul is putting some sticks in the fire, a snake bites him, a poisonous snake. And the people think, ooh, this must be a really bad guy. He must, they, they sat watching, waiting to see if he'd die. <laughs> you know, that's the way most people are. They operate by superstition. I'm, I'm going to talk about that tonight. I hope you'll be back tonight. Um, and then when he doesn't die, they, they say, oh, he must be a god. <laughs> uh, you know, nothing to do with, with reality. Uh, he has opportunity to heal a man. Uh, he's, as they continue on their trip, there's other Christians who, who meet them in a certain town and, and encourage them. But you know, in all of this, Paul is still a prisoner. Acts chapter 28, verse 16. When we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with the soldier that kept him. He was basically under house arrest. Um, and the Bible says, uh, verse 30, uh, just right at the end of the chapter, Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. What a strange situation. Here he is, he's a prisoner. He makes it to Rome. He's under house arrest. He's under house arrest for two years. And people come to him and he, he has Bible studies and, and preaching and teaching. Uh, what a situation. You know, who would, who would uh, have picked that? But life goes on. We just don't know what physical situations we'll be in. Some of you have come uh, from other countries, as have I. You know, some of you have gone through physical and, and uh, difficult situations. You know, as young people, we, we don't know these things are coming. 
But life goes on, and the choice is, will I believe God or not? You know, when they were making a decision whether to leave port, Paul told them what was going to happen, and they decided to believe the masters and the captain. And they basically took a vote and said, yeah, most of us want to do it. So are you going to believe God, or are you going to believe leaders? Are you going to believe popular opinion? We need to believe God. We need to believe God for life. You know, there's a lot of decisions we make in our life. What we're going to do. Uh, you know, your purpose, your security, your significance, they're found in Christ. Don't seek them somewhere else. Believe the Lord. And especially, who will you believe for eternity? Now, I'm constantly amazed. I, I often get the chance to ask people, if they died, do they know for sure they'd go to heaven? Or... Do you have any uh, spiritual inclinations? You, do you think about spiritual things? And you know, most people honestly answer me, no, not really. I'm not concerned. Just have, have no uh, purpose in their own heart as to their relationship to the Lord. The Bible says the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And it says the only alternative is hell. Man, that's pretty simple. Uh, we, we often talk about the simple plan of salvation. It's true. Life is pretty simple. And God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He says the wages of sin is death. Uh, we need to agree with God on that. He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Man, we need to agree with God on that. Jesus said, neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. We need to agree with God about our sin, about the Savior, the one who died and rose again. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, Paul is telling those people, I believe God. And his message then as, as he preached the gospel was, You need to believe God. And my message this morning is, You need to believe God. Believe God in how to live, but especially believe Him about eternity. Every day, people step out into eternity that didn't, didn't expect to. Every day. Uh, just this week, someone in, in Brisbane, person riding a bike, hit by a truck, gone. That happens all the time. People who are healthy and, and expecting to live long lives, and yet they're confronted with eternity. Let me encourage you this morning. The Bible says now is the time. Now is the time. It's not another day. It's not another place. There is hope. Life can be tough, but we can trust the Lord. Eternity is forever, and the decision is heaven or hell. Uh, trust in the Lord. God promises, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a blessing it is that we have a God who is trustworthy and who has eternity in, in his grasp. There is hope. We're going to sing a, a song this morning in, in conclusion. It's, it's number two in, in the songbook there. I, it will be worth it all. Uh, as we go through life, you might have a great life. You might have the world's best life. But uh, still, uh, we're going to stand before God in eternity. Come on up, Azra.